Inside a secure and contamination-free laboratory, scientists hunt for atomic fingerprints at Cybersdorf, Austria. They're looking for telltale signs of uranium or plutonium that can reveal illegal nuclear activities. They're analysing environmental samples like this dust swipe taken in Iraq on the eve of the Second Gulf War. IAEA inspectors took the smears inside a rocket factory. They were sent for analysis at the Safeguards Analytical Laboratory, which found no clandestine activity. Well, we've been in business for quite a long time, actually. It started back in the early 90s, and uh, we were doing inspections in Iraq after the Gulf War in 91. We did inspections in North Korea for a few years and in South Africa. Uh, more recently, we've been involved with Iran, the uh, enrichment facilities in Iran. So we can find particles of enriched uranium that they produced there or which came there on uh, imported parts, maybe coming from the black market even. These are the kind of things that we can detect now. The scientists use highly sensitive instruments like electron microscopes and mass spectrometers that can detect particles 100 times smaller than a human hair. At the chemical analysis unit, the focus shifts to scrutinizing nuclear samples taken at so-called bulk handling facilities, where uranium is converted, enriched or fabricated into fuel. Well, uranium and plutonium are the two main fissionable elements that are used for generating power in, in uh, nuclear power reactors. But there are also the elements that are used, the fissionable elements most commonly used in producing a nuclear weapon. And so we're most interested in keeping a very close eye on where the fissionable isotopes of those two elements are moving around in the nuclear fuel cycle. Much like accountants, the lab work helps inspectors to check whether a country's nuclear books balance and if the measurements tally with what was declared. So we receive the samples here. We dissolve them because they're mostly in uh, solid form, especially when they're coming into the plutonium laboratory, which is where we're standing now. And then we prepare the samples for measurement in the mass spectrometry laboratory, and this almost always entails making a chemical separation on the samples. So there's quite a bit of front-end chemical processing that takes place with these samples before they actually go to the final measurement downstairs in the mass spectrometry laboratory. High precision and accuracy is key. So is anonymity. All samples are coded so that none of the scientists knows their origin. Inspectors bring over 1,000 samples for analysis at the lab each year. Plans are underway for a 40 million euro upgrade to the premises and equipment. It will help the IAEA to stay a step ahead of nuclear proliferators and provide independent scientific data.